Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking everything we've learned up until this point and turning it into the first steps of prototypes. For me, this is the most exciting part of the design process as it allows you to bring your ideas to life and see how they actually hold up in the real world. Sometimes you get lucky and nail your design on the first attempt, but most of the time it takes a lot of refinement and even resetting to make your ideas work. Um, this is what we call in the business foreshadowing for this episode. So just to recap, during our ideas generation stage, we narrowed down multiple ideas to just one, an elephant themed fidget exerciser. One of the key design criteria was that it should incorporate movements that specifically benefited those with osteoarthritis. So I used this as a starting point and performed some online research across some medically reputable websites. I came across many interesting movements that involved squeezing, bending, lifting and pinching. And so I mapped these on a visual document alongside the initial concept sketch that I'd created. Placing these elements together helped me make connections that allowed me to start thinking creatively about how I could incorporate the exercises into the elephant theme form that I'd come up with. I'd already integrated a squeeze exercise into my initial design, but my research had taught me that a larger range of motion was required, so I explored various cutout shapes that would allow for this, and then moved on to thinking about some of the other hand exercises. Increasing the diameter of the eye hole could make a finger slot, and this could be paired with a thumb slot between the legs, allowing for finger pinches. Another thing that came to mind was that I could also reverse both the squeezing and pinching movements and turn them into exercises that involved flexing fingers outwards. At this stage, there was already a ton of things to figure out in terms of the mechanism, ergonomics, and overall functionality, so I thought this was the right time to jump in and create the first prototype. At this point in the process, some designers may opt to develop their sketches into more refined technical drawings, or even make rough models out of card or foam. But my personal preference is to jump into CAD as soon as possible, as this is where I feel the most comfortable and the most effective. With the fidget exerciser being relatively small, I decided to CAD um, and 3D print free prototype variations to experiment with different mechanisms and forms. This is a technique that I use quite regularly to um, save time and explore multiple ideas all at once. Option 1 was the most basic, and the flexing of the material acted as the core mechanism. Um, option 2 had a 3D printed coil that could be replaced with stronger or weaker variants. And um, option 3 involved the use of a spring that I found in a clicky pen. And I even went ahead and integrated the clicking mechanism part of the pen into the model for some tactile feedback. Um, with all these catted up uh, and ready, it was just time to get on to 3D printing. So here are the initial prototypes in action. Um, to my surprise, all of them kind of worked and they had the potential to be refined and iterated upon. But there was a problem. Um, something just didn't feel right and I was a little bit underwhelmed. At this point, I could have continued, um, made the final prototype, given it to CAF and called the project done, but I wouldn't have felt good about it. This was one of those moments that happen every now and again in a project um, where you've done the research, you've come up with the ideas and fulfilled the brief, but you know you can do better. And in this case, I knew I could make things, well, just a little bit more fun. I found one of the best things you can do in situations like this is take a break from the project for a little while and give your subconscious time to work through the problem. And that's exactly what I did. Over the following few days, I worked on an entirely different project. And in the evenings, I hung out with my friends trying to give myself time to relax. It was during these evenings, though, that I got a spark of a new idea. We'd been playing a lot of board games together, and that got me thinking about dexterity games. They require you to manipulate pieces in specific and fun ways, and they're repeatable and can be played on your own. This is just the inspiration that I'd been looking for, and lucky for me, after a quick conversation with Kath, I confirmed that she was excited about this solution too, and we were set on this new direction. So I began researching and testing current dexterity games on the market, and began to break them down into their individual elements which I mapped out in two columns. One for the core dexterity actions that I came across, and the other for the objects that were used within the games. I then went on to create a third column that listed potential arthritis exercises, and from there I started clustering elements from each column into a range of game ideas. As I formed these combinations, I started to think about which elements were most important. We know Kath loves elephants, so it was a given to include them as an object in the game. 
I also considered which exercises were the most important, and I came to the conclusion that the finger pinching should be one of the main mechanics. The reason for this is that many of the other exercises are done naturally, like squeezing, when you pick up certain objects. But how often do you pinch your little thumb and finger together? Probably not that much. So I wanted to give this exercise the most attention. So after much deliberation, I decided to explore a game that involved elephants, pinching, stacking and pegs. The next step was to dig a bit deeper and see if I could figure out an engaging and fun theme. So I headed to Google Images for some inspiration. Um, the images that caught my eye the most were the images of uh, little birds perched on elephants' backs. And I thought this was really cute and it neatly brought in another character that we could use within the game. Decided to move forward with this idea, I now needed to work out the relationship between the birds and the elephants. And I instantly thought of the birds making little nests out of twigs. And I realized that the birds themselves could be designed to work like pegs to pick up the twigs. The first component I created was the twigs, where I took inspiration from the Tinder blocks game that I had tested earlier. This resulted in a series of abstract Tetris-like blocks. The next components were the birds, and these were loosely based off of different 3D printed pegs that I'd found online, uh, with a few tweaks to make them a little bit more bird-like. And finally, I designed the centerpiece, the elephant, where the twigs would be stacked. When designing the elephant, I set myself some constraints. Um, it required a flat top surface to stack the components on, and I wanted it to be able to be printable in place with no support, so I paid careful attention to the angles of each area. With all the elements in place, it was just time to bring my first prototype to life. And here we have it, introducing Pinchy version 1. I knew I had a long journey ahead, but I was feeling really positive about the direction I was headed in. And in the next video, we'll be analysing and testing Pinchy before developing and improved iterations on it. So, see you there.